Welcome back. My guest this week is Federated Farmers Environment and Water Spokesperson Ian McKenzie. Ian, welcome to Rural Delivery. Hi Roger. Ian, dairy farmers in particular have spent about a decade under fire now over water issues. Yeah. But a, a different picture is starting to emerge. Well I think uh, since the instigation of the Frontier Clean Streams Accord and, and farmers uh, giving a bit more attention to riparian management in particular that uh, the, the, the trends in water quality seem to be reflecting some of that, you know, some of that benefit of that work. If I'd spent 10 years reading the paper, I'd be seeing quite a different picture between the figures that we're seeing now and the opinions that are uh, expressed in the media. How do you explain that? Yeah, now there are issues and we're not resigning from that, but I think the trends are getting better. Certainly the agricultural industries are working very hard to get their farmers to adapt to environmental, you know, think about environmental stewardship as part of the management package. The, the discussion on farm and within agricultural circles is all about how you balance uh, environmental stewardship with your production and um, food safety obviously is quite a big issue as well. Yeah. What role is data and technology playing? We, we need to know what's going on and uh, technology allows us to do some of that uh, from remote sites. D data is critical to knowing uh, whether the things we're doing are making a difference or not. There's a move now, isn't there, to make uh, a more standardised or create a more standardised data set across the country? Yeah, a absolutely critical that we have uh, the, the, the moves that the Minister Adams uh, put in place uh, last week to have consistency of site selection and what they're testing for and how they test it is uh, critical for New Zealand to be able to monitor whether we're making improvements or not. For most New Zealanders, the bottom line standard is can I swim in it, can I drink it, can I fish in it? It's tough for farmers to meet a bottom line that includes so many things. Yeah, and, and I think what farmers want is uh, consistency in the approach so that uh, if it applies to them out in the rural areas, it actually applies to water bodies in the urban areas as well. This MPS will require communities to uh, decide on the values they want their water bodies to aspire to. So if they want it for swimming, it'll have to meet the standard. If they want it for trout fishing, it might actually have to meet a higher level of standard. So it's up to the community to decide the values, and and, it, what, and I think the the concept is that not all water bodies will necessarily meet trout fishing standards or drinking water quality standards, but you, the community will decide those water bodies that should meet those standards. The fact is that some urban communities are going to struggle with the sort of rates rises that might be required in order to sort out their water problems. Uh, farmers have or are already coughing up. How is that going to affect the balance between how urban water is managed? Yeah. And rural water is managed. Yeah, and, and, and it comes down to uh, politics. I mean, if New Zealand is serious about uh, preserving its water quality, and we, ha we still have some of the best, very best water quality in the world, um, sorting out where there is a real problem, absolutely, and, the, and if farming is part of that, or is the major part player in that, we've got to sort it out. If it's urban authorities, they've got to, pl they've got to do their thing, and then, you know, I, I, it's just a question of time and money, really, isn't it? Clearly things are getting better. We've seen a reduction in abatement notices and infringements. Fine level has stayed about the same, although less prosecution. So the stick is getting bigger. What about the carrot? What incentive is there for farmers who've already done well to keep doing better? We're part of New Zealand society and we actually live out in the country areas where, the, where we, we're sad to see, you know, it's quite nice to be able to go fishing for a trout in the evening if, you've got, you know, if you're not involved in doing anything else. So, you know, I think farmers understand that, that they've got to play their role, and I think that's the biggest driver. There are various other ways you can incentivise them, and I think uh, um, the commercial companies you supply your product to play, can play a leading role, as Fonterra and the dairy companies have done in terms of introducing their sustainable farm accord. Where I think the major concern is is the emphasis on the loss of nitrates, because this is a quite an intractable problem. I th I, we, we can make a huge difference to the colour of the water and the faecal contamination in water relatively uh, with, a, with a, you know, it's time and money and a, and a few management practices you can change. But we can know we can make a difference and the trends are already showing that, reflecting that difference. Where I think there's going to be a real issue is that, and that is um, in nitrate loss. You've placed a lot of the credit for where we are today on the Clean Streams Accord which started what, over a decade ago now. Yeah. We've come a long way in the science and our attitude um, and re regulation and viewpoint with the markets since then, where do you think we might be in 10 years' time? Uh, I, I, I've been on record in saying that it seems to me that the dairy industry in particular is, in 10 years' time, is likely to be the, um, 
the most environmental, uh, have, the, have the greatest environmental stewardship program of any industry in New Zealand, and I don't think they're necessarily credited for that. The challenge is to try to get, make sure that the other agricultural industries are matching what the dairy industry is doing. Ian, he's hoping we do all see that. Thanks for joining us. Pleasure. Now let's have a look at some events happening.